When all else fails, a man who has no further arguments will tell you the above. Hit the gym. But telling us to hit the gym won't change the fact that I am successful. I'm highly educated. I have my own money. I can buy myself whatever I want. I can create an investment portfolio. I can prepare for retirement. I don't have to depend on a man. Yeah, but that's completely ignorant of what the point actually is. Like this is in response to a video where she says she can't find a man to date her. And she thinks that being fat is something that's negatively affecting her. And somebody gave her some insightful information, which is hit the gym. And don't take it too literal. When somebody says hit the gym, more or less take it like a, you should be getting in shape, more of an argument, okay? That's, that, that, that should be the, the predominant thing that you get from that. You should be losing weight if that's something you want, okay? Now, I understand it's great that you have all these amazing things, all these amazing assets, like you just said, but uh, it doesn't matter given the fact that that's not helping you acquire a mate, right? Like, where can we just be honest for a second? You're literally saying all this stuff as if it's like a benefit to you when you're literally telling me you can't find a man. So obviously you listing this stuff out is not really a benefit. So yes, it's great that you can, you have your own money, you have your own car, you have your own everything. That's awesome. You can prepare for retirement. That's awesome. It's so great. But if the ultimate goal is to find a man and none of those things are actually helping you, what is the purpose of listing this stuff out? It just smells like some super ridiculous copium right now. Basically, what you're saying to me is, well, even though I can't get a man, I have all these great stuff. Awesome. That's that's so great. I'm so happy for you, dude. But honestly speaking, that's not going to help you find a man to be with. When you're in the dating market, can we just, okay. When you're in the dating market... You have to look at what the other sex wants, okay? Especially if you're appealing to the other sex. So if you're a woman, you have to understand what do guys want. First and foremost, an attractive woman. That's just what it is, okay? I know it sucks to say this, but everybody knows this deep down. I'm just saying the quiet part out loud. If you want to appeal to a man, you have to be attractive. And nobody's saying you have to be the most attractive. You just got to be attractive enough. Just be what you are, but just make yourself more hot. And that's okay. Guys are doing that too. And the thing is, it's different for men. It's different for women. Men don't usually have to mid-max themselves in the physical sense. Like a lot of dudes are just default ugly. And that's okay because dudes have other things going for them. And women have a tendency of looking past the physical traits if he has other traits that are more beneficial. So like maybe he does have his own money. Maybe he's funny. Maybe he's charismatic. Maybe he has really good conversational skills. Like this stuff is really appealing to a lot of women. And I'm not saying it's not appealing to men as well. But most of the time when you talk to a dude and you ask him, hey, bro, tell me some things about your girlfriend. Oh, man, she's pretty. She's so beautiful. She's so this and that. And the other things usually are secondary traits for a lot of guys, especially when you're meeting somebody for the first time. Appearances really do matter for most men. We're very visual creatures. And I'm not saying that your degree, your career, your money aren't beneficial. That's great. But usually those things are like secondary. And people have a tendency of projecting what they want onto what other people want. And that's not always the case. So like when I hear somebody go, I have a job, I have a career, I have this, I have money, I have all this stuff. Like That's all really great, but what does that have to do with anything? Like, wh wh Why do you think that that is going to like boost your chances in a relationship when it's already been known that it's not helping you at all? You're obviously single, right? So what is the purpose? Is it, like, I guess like this is like a flex for you. This is like, a, oh, I don't need a man even if I got a man. Okay, but that like so the fuck what you obviously want a man, right? So what is the purpose of saying if I don't get one? You're basically saying if I never get one, this is just like a precautionary thing. So like I can always look back on this and go, well, even though I didn't get a boyfriend or a husband, I still have all these things when you know that's not ultimately what's going to make you satisfied. It doesn't matter. You're just using this as like a cop out. <laughs> Investment portfolio. I can prepare for retirement. I don't have to depend on a man. Hitting, telling me to hit the gym won't change any of that. Yeah, but so fucking what? It, yes, it won't change any of that, but that doesn't matter because the ultimate goal here is to find a potential candidate for you to be with for the rest of your life. So when you say this and go like, oh, but I have all this great stuff, that's completely irrelevant. That has nothing to do with anything. That's like somebody going, tell me like, oh, uh, you know, this car might be a little bit expensive for you. So you might need to like increase your money and you go, yeah, but I'm funny. Yeah, but I'm funny. But I am like, I'm really charismatic. You know, I'm really charismatic. I wear the same color socks. You think the dealership guy's gonna go, oh yeah, obviously. Yeah, no, you're right. Let's let's get you a car. Let's, you know what? The 20% off the top because you're just so amazing. Obvi no, that doesn't matter. Why do you think this is like a, what? Like, is this really a flex for you? Like, great. I'm happy that you have all this stuff, but 
so what, dude? Is it really that big of a deal to make a video on the internet about how great you are because you have retirement plans and all this other stuff? Like, what does that have to do with you getting a boyfriend, dude? We're just trying to help you out. It's 2024, so telling someone to hit the gym is not the insult that you think it is. It's not even supposed to be an insult. It's probably just the truth. Hit the gym and become more attractive. It's okay to... Look, I know a lot of people think that you're, like, feeding into the cultural normality of something or, like, you're feeding into the patriarchy because if you lose weight, ultimately you're trying to appease to men and you don't want to appease men, which is fucking dumb because, like, I don't know if you realize, but if you're a heterosexual woman, you're going to have to appeal to a man, especially if you want to have a relationship, right? I don't know why people are so fucking dumb nowadays when it comes to that shit. It's fine to understand that a lot of guys like pretty women. It's okay to acknowledge that, all right? It's it's totally fine. Um, it's also really fine to acknowledge that women have a tendency of ignoring the physical traits. Like, I'm not saying women don't prioritize physical traits. It's okay. Like, it's good for you to look good as a man. That's why I always tell dudes to, like, try to make sure they're min-maxing as much as they possibly can in areas that they can't possibly. So, I'm always telling dudes to go to the gym, I'm always telling dudes to like know how to wash themselves properly, wear deodorant, sh shave, do these proper things that are going to make you more attractive. Because like even in general, those things, even though they're very low on the totem pole, those are going to put you above like 99% of men if you know how to do any of that stuff. And if you know how to do all that stuff, you're like really, really high up on that totem pole. So I always tell people what they got to do in order to appease women and what they got to do in order to, uh, to appease men. I know it sucks to say this, but if you're a woman and you want better chances in the dating market, being fat is not a beneficial thing. You're like in a bracket of like fetish content or I guess dudes that have very, very low standards and they're willing to just date anybody. Do you really want to be somebody's only option? Do you want to be somebody's like, oh, like lottery ticket type shit? No, obviously fucking not. I'm, I'm dating somebody. I want somebody to date me if they had a lot of options. I want them to choose me out of their bajillion options because I'm so cool and I'm so amazing, right? You obviously want to be a part of that. So when you name out these like, oh, I have a portfolio and shit like that, like I'm happy for you. I really am. But it just screams you're insecure. It just screams I know that I can't get a man, but it's okay because I have these other things. When in reality, is that really actually doing anything for you when it comes to finding a relationship? No. And it seems irrelevant to lay these things out. And it screams, it's super pick me, by the way. It's really pick me. Pick me 101 right here. It's 2024, so telling someone- By the way, I hate it when somebody says it's 2024. And again, it's not It's not a joke. It's not like a, it's not an insult. It's a, probably a true statement. Hit the gym in the sense of like, get in shape, become more physically attractive. To hit the gym is not the insult that you think it is. Please go back to the drawing board and do better. And it, it's really funny that she says, go back to the drawing board, given the fact that she's been trying to date. To, I don't know. I, I forgot the video. We reacted to a video of her before, but she said that she's been single for a very, very long time. I don't know if it was years or if it was months. I'm pretty sure it was like years. But if you've been single for a prolonged period of time and you keep trying and trying and trying and there's no success and you somehow determine that it's not you, you're dumb. You need to do something different. It's not it's not everybody else. I don't know why so many people think that they're so special and that everybody needs to change for them. You are the one ultimately that makes, needs to make those make those decisions. And also, why are you externalizing all of your fucking problems, dude? How can you sit here and have all these issues when it comes to dating and somehow believe that it's everybody else's fault and not you? Butch, by the way, is completely fucking flawed because how are you going to change everybody else's opinion on you when you don't do anything to improve yourself? So... Even when you externalize it, you should be looking at how you're going to fix your problem instead of worrying about what everybody else is going to do. Something better, okay? Like, make us feel it. I just... It's just dumb. It's just, it's just dumb. I think it's funny that <laughs> men hate when you treat them how they treat you. Oof. Ooh, they hate that shit. They hate it. Quick story time. I had a friends with benefits a while back that basically told me, like, look, I want this to be no emotion the least complicated thing I deal with in my life. I said, cool, no problem, I got you. First link, pull up to his house, we do the do, I use the bathroom, I start putting on my clothes to go home. He gonna stop me and say, where are you going? I said, I'm going home. He goes, well damn, you don't wanna lay up, talk a little bit? I said, for what? I got what I came for, I was, I was here for the meat. And he goes, ah, oh, damn, okay. Damn, dude, that's hard as fuck. <laughs> I was here for the meat is crazy, dude. Damn. I mean, hey, bro, it's, it's whatever. If you're in a friends with benefits and you clearly established the rules and parameters and you want to lay up, dude, I'm going to have to go with her on this one, dude. Whatever, bro. Me personally, that's fine with me, dude. If somebody just wanted to come over to have sex, I'm really, 
fine with zero physical contact to be honest like i hate it when you sleep with somebody and they try to grab you dude it's already really hot okay i have the air conditioner on and i'm sweating because you're like ridiculously hot and sweaty it's nasty it's gross okay can you like get away from me and it's always bad it's always like oh you never want to cuddle you never want to make me the little spoon i'm always trying to cuddle you i'm compromising with you dude i don't even want to touch you because it's hot and sweaty and you're literally clammy i don't know what to tell you about that shit okay i know it's a problem for you but I don't want to touch you. Okay, I'm trying to go to sleep. I hate it. Look, sleep is very, very, very valuable to me. And I get that you want, you know, I'll cuddle you for a little bit, 10, 20 minutes. I don't know how much time you actually need in order to be cuddled, but I'll cuddle you for a little bit. But that's really all I got, bro. Maybe 20 minutes at most. I'm turning over and I'm going to sleep. And I know a lot of people like they'll touch you and they'll go like, I'm just like, dude, stop talking to me. I don't like, you know, like, how many... You know how many times I've been in the bed and that other person was like, oh, can you, like, what are we going to do tomorrow? And I'm looking like, what do you, it's, it, what, it's, it's 1 30 in the, I'm trying to go to bed. What are you doing? Get a fucking, stop talking to me. And I'm going to sleep. And I know I come off like an asshole, but simultaneously, you're a fucking asshole when I told you I'm trying to sleep. Why do you keep trying to talk to me? Why do you keep trying to touch me? Leave me alone. Let me sleep. And I don't know how many times I've had to deal with that shit with the same person, me too. But anyway. Days later, we having a conversation and he telling me, I don't like that you be treating me like a piece of meat. It's almost like you don't care about me. I don't. I don't. I don't think this is how men act, dude. It just kind of seems like you got into a relationship or friends with benefits with a really ignorant individual. This has nothing to do with men. Do men treat women like pieces of meat? Sure. But that's not just a solely unique trait that men, like, they're the, they're the only ones. They're the only genders that, you know, experience that particular type of trait, dude. Whatever, dude. I've gotten to a friends with benefits with a girl, and I remember that I literally was like telling her, I was like, I just want to be like your boyfriend. Like I was, I was real deal gay. I was real gay. I was telling her, I was like, I just really like you. I think that you're a really great person. I just like, I would love to be in a relationship with you. And she was like, Well, uh, I mean, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes right now. And we were having sex like all the time, and I wanted more, but she didn't want any more, and that's okay. But. I don't think that that's a indication of like how men treat women inherently, dude. I don't know about that. If you just want to meet from the guy, whatever. The guy is obvious. If he if he was the one that clearly laid down these rules and you were abiding by the rules and he didn't want to abide by the rules, then that guy was, I don't know, dude, dumb, stupid, dude. I don't think this has really anything to do with being men or women. Why Why do you need me to care about you if you told me you, you want no emotions? He was like, damn, you don't care about me? That's crazy. I think this is bullshit. I don't know if this is real or not, dude. I'm gonna call complete fucking bullshit on this shit. I don't think it. I don't think it's actually happened. I think this is a facade. I think it's a great illusion. I think a lot of people on TikTok have imaginations that are very, very vivid. Honestly speaking, I mean, I don't know how many times I've heard like story times where I'm like listening to the story and I'm like, it could be believable, but then somebody says something really, really off the off the chain or something. that's like, whoa, what the fuck, dude? That makes no sense at all. I don't know if this actually did happen, but uh, if it did happen, dude, it's. I don't know why you would draw this correlation to when men treat you this way. You know how it is mm, i don't actually i don't know i don't know how to understand that is at all dude i mean men are usually a little bit more emotionally detached from things usually but that's only because men don't carry as many emotions that, that, compared to women like inherently but uh dude i don't know where you would even tie this from dude dudes just deal with things differently i don't know man whatever it's just weird the math ain't mathing on this one. You you don't want emotions, but you want me to care about you. Okay, so boom. Dating yeah, I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to call cap on that. It just seemed unrealistic. Dating sucks. Dating while fat sucks sucks. So I downloaded Hinge again. I gotta keep it a bug, bro. The hair ain't it. I mean, whatever, dude. It is what it is, bro. But it, the hair ain't it, though. Emphasis on again because ain't no joints on Hinge for me. <laughs> There's no connections. But I don't use Tinder because the demographic isn't there. Just penis, basically. I mean, if you go on Tinder, dude, it's basically just dick. Consistent dick. Dick all over the place. And I agree with her, dude. But if you're going on Hinge, I... What is Hinge? Like, isn't that a plus-size dating app? Or is that... No, it's Woo Plus. I guess Hinge is... I don't know what Hinge is, dude. I don't know. I don't know, dude. But most dating apps... You're, it is meta to go on dating apps. It is meta to, go, to, to find people to be with on dating apps because that's where everybody's finding people and i know there's a lot of bots i know there are a lot of people out there that are just there for sex but ultimately like because of how the cultural like demographic has shifted in the last say 10 15 years it has drastically changed by the way if you if you haven't dated in like five or ten years dude 
it is very different nowadays. People don't talk to each other outside anymore. There are people that are so completely anti antisocial because most of the interactions they have are just people they talk to online. And so if you meet somebody on public, you're more likely to get a, oh, oh, oh. that's like all the time. That's what you're going to fucking get. And this is man or women. I mean, women are a little bit more social than men, but in general, dude, people just don't talk to each other anymore. It's really sad. So if you want to meet anybody, you're going to have to do that on the internet through uh, dating apps, most likely. But people have told me that Instagram and other dating, other places like that snapchat and other places like that are pretty optimal too so if you can find somebody there go ahead really only use black because you know you know but i'm trying to up the quality uh, hold on i'm sorry what use black because tinder because the demographic isn't there i primarily only use black because you know you know but i'm trying to up the quality of the candidates because <sighs> it's a doggy dog world out there and i'm already about to delete it <laughs> I'm looking at my matches like, why me? Got to go. I don't know exactly what she's doing. I don't know what that means, bro. Uh, you got bad matches? I mean, I don't know. Change your dating profile. I knew a dude that when he made his dating profile, this is like maybe, I don't know, 10 years ago, or maybe a little bit less than that, maybe like eight years ago. But he was on like OkCupid or whatever. And on his profile, he literally just put down things that he wanted from a woman. So he literally just put down... I'm black, I'm 6'2", I'm a man dingo, BBC is my name, don't contact me unless you want dick. Like, that's what that's what he put down. And I remember him showing me this profile, and I was like, dude, it's never gonna fucking work. Like, you're not gonna get, he's like, bro, I'm just trying to fuck bitches, dog. I don't really give a fuck about anything else, man. I don't want nothing serious. And I was like, this is never gonna fucking work, right? And he showed me the DMs he was getting and predominantly from white women. I didn't see, like maybe I saw one black girl on the entire ro uh, the roster of DMs he was getting, but there was so many white girls that going like, oh my God, I really need BBC in my life. I love big black King Kong meat. Uh, damn, I really need this in my life right now. Where are you? And I'm just looking like, what do you, how did this happen? Like, what are you, are you making these accounts and like DMing yourself? Like, there's no way this is actually happening. And he called up one of the girls, and I shit you not, he, one of the girls, like, on his phone was just called Bitch One. And I, it, she picked up. She was like, hey, what's going on, daddy? And he was like, yo, what's up, bitch? And she was like, nothing much. I'm just doing whatever. And he was like, yeah, tell my boy how much you love BBC. And she was like, I love BBC. It's my favorite. Specifically, your BBC. That's my favorite. It's so delectable. I love it. And I'm just, like, listening to this call, and I'm like, dude. That's crazy. Um, what the fuck? Who is this woman? Who is this? What? And he's like, yeah, I'm fucking with her sister too. That's bitch too. And I was looking like just unnatural behavior, honestly speaking. But it actually happened. I'm not even joking about that shit. It's actually, it was an anomalistic thing that happened. And he was fucking both of them simultaneously. I don't know if he was doing it like at the same time. I hope not. But they were totally down for it. Like it was cool. And they were saying some shit like it's so terrible what happened to black people 200 years ago. This is the least I can do. And I'm just thinking like this is... That's fucking crazy, bro. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I know that in some time period, uh, maybe like a thousand years ago or something like that, some white guy in my lineage somewhere was oppressed by somebody. I think I deserve something as compensation from that, like 100, 200, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I don't know. Like, I, you know, my lineage suffered somewhere. So, I'll, you know, my, my great, great grandfather had to suck a potato for four years. Like, I think I deserve a fellatio or something like that. I don't know, dude, whatever, dude. But whatever and i was asking him, i was like how do you feel about these these girls are just using you for bbc and he was just like i don't care like that's literally what i'm here for like i'm just a mandingo and i was like all right dude like i guess man <laughs> i guess whatever's down whatever you're down for but uh it was quite eye-opening for me i didn't know it was like that for uh black guys i don't know if it's like that for all black guys but i met quite a few black dudes that just tell me they just have sex with snow bunnies and and that's what they do so you're going on a date and it took you an hour to find the best outfit. If this was the best, oh look, maybe this is not her like at this particular moment saying that this is the best outfit, but this, I'm gonna keep it a solid buck, dude. This shit looked like some picnic table cloth you put over that bench. This is not a, if this is the best outfit you got, you gotta try, <laughs> listen, dude, okay? I'm gonna keep it a buck. A regular t-shirt would have been better than this. I don't know what you think you're doing with this, bro. I'm actually concerned that this is, is this even, where'd you find this? Where is, the, what is that? You finally did your hair, your makeup, you look in the mirror and you're looking good, feeling good, telling well, yourself, man. Well, I mean, you know, maybe, you know, to somebody. I did a great job, I love this outfit, I can't wait to go out, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, what if he's disappointed in how I look? <laughs> 
So what? So what if he's disappointed? That sounds. Uh, I mean, sure. I mean, that's that's okay. I mean, yeah, there to to some degree or another. You gotta you gotta be confident within yourself, and you gotta understand that this is what you got, and this is how you're gonna do it, and this is the best that you can do. It's all right. Like that's cool. Uh, if we're talking about weight, though, like, I mean, a lot of these women, I, for some reason, sit there and they tell me, like, oh, you know, I don't know if he knows how fat I am. If you're asking whether or not, like, how fat this guy thinks that you are, you got to lose some weight. I'm sorry to say it, dude. That's a, that's a really tough, that's a tough thing to say to yourself. Am I, does he know how big I actually am? Like, <laughs> let me on. Can I just be on? Like, I am, I have pictures on my apps, right? But. I mean, listen, uh, there's going to be some pictures that maybe had a filter or 10 and I might be a little bit bigger than he might think. I mean, his eyes might be deceived by the sheer velocity, the sheer width of my girthiness. I don't know if he really understands how boy guy I actually am. I hear that quite a bit. I don't know if she's saying that, but pointed in how I look. <laughs> so what? So what if he's disappointed? That sounds like a him problem. So if he is, who cares? The thing is, you look good, you feel good, and don't let anybody steal that from you. I mean, I guess. Sure. I mean, it's, it's a good message. Go ahead. You be you. Hashtag Slay Queen Edges. It, you know, it's just, it's not worth it. It's a good time to unmatch, block delete, and go find somebody who can't wait to see what you're wearing next. So is dating harder when you're fat? Yes, but also no. Just stick with me. So sometime last year, I had this flirty friend. This guy was absolutely gorgeous. He had like every guy's ideal, like dream body. I'm talking the six pack, everything. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. A lot of guys don't even want abs. Like a lot of dudes just want to chill or be at whatever size they're at. And that's okay for them. But, you know, abs are pretty cool. They're tough to maintain. I feel like a lot of people want abs until they realize what it takes to maintain abs because it is a quite a lot of work. And a lot of it has to do with how much of your body fat percentage is. Like everybody has abs. It's just how much body fat you got in front of it. So yeah, it's cool to have abs, but is, is it maintainable? Probably not. Like maybe you can maintain them for like a few months because it's not sustainable for most of the year for most people. And he unless was you're, also- Unless you're taking some drugs. Really nice and sweet. And he happened to like bigger girls. He was also a male performer at a male review, similar to like Magic Mike. You were dating a stripper? That's okay, right? Is that okay? That's all right. I know a lot of guys right off the bat would just be like, I'm never dating a stripper. I would never do that. That's just, just gross to me. Personally speaking, I just really, it would have, I would have to really see what kind of like exercises you were doing and what type of establishment it was. Like if there's cockroaches, probably not. Um, I don't know how I'd feel about like, if, say for instance, an OnlyFans model or somebody that was doing pornography, dude. If it was solo content, I probably maybe wouldn't have as much of an issue as it would have been if it was a guy. Obviously, I wouldn't date you if you were having sex with copious amounts of men as like your profession. I'm not here to sit here. I'm not, look, I'm not telling you that you can't do whatever you want. It's fine. Make your money however you're going to make your money. I'm totally for sex work. But uh, personally speaking, I wouldn't want to date somebody that's getting cream pied. Like, I just not for me personally. I'm just not for that. Now, this isn't like a deal breaker for me. I really don't judge on that kind of thing, but I know lots of women who would be uncomfortable with that. And there's nothing wrong with that. People are allowed to have their preferences. So anyway, I was going to New York City last year and that's where he works, that's where he performs. So naturally I was gonna go see the show. It was amazing. I had never gone to anything like it before and I truly had just the best time ever. So I was really curious and sometime after the show, I decided to ask him, hey, does this like make it harder for you to date? Like having this profession? Yeah, of course it does. What? Yes, uh, duh. Why would this not make it harder to date, bro? You're literally, your entire job is to appeal to the opposite sex or even sometimes the same sex. Yes, uh, why would this not? And he said, no, if anything, yeah, I don't know about that. That dude's lying. Thing, it makes it easier because why would I want to date someone who has a problem with it anyway? That has stuck with me to this day. So you get where I'm going with this. Like, you're, Yeah, you're saying basically like, why is it? It's harder to date fat women because most people are not going to be attracted to fat women, but that automatically negates people that are not attracted to fat women. Therefore, all you're left with are the people that do want to date fat women. So I understand what you're saying, but you're literally putting yourself in a very niche bracket by saying that. Like what you're basically saying is like, even though I'm reducing my potential candidates by upwards of 80%, that's okay because whatever's left over is what's left over. And I know they'll be okay with dating me. Like I get that. I do. But 
you do know just from averages how statistic how how statistics work here you're getting less valuable men you do understand that right you're getting less valuable candidates as options because because you're reducing it by 20 percent. you understand what i'm saying so i'm sorry if you're, you're reducing it by like 80 percent. i don't know what the exact number is but i'm gonna go as far as to say that most people so like more than 50 percent, are not attracted to people that are fat and this goes across the board so yes you're right the people that are left over are definitely the people that are going to want to date fat women but like how many of those people are very degenerate like how many of those people have no standards how many of those people are not your type how many of those people are fetishizing you how many of those people are just not people you want to date probably a lot am i wrong like even dating in general you're gonna have to go through a lot of people that you just think are like you meet them and you go well no not that guy how many times you're gonna have to have that happen for you in this very very niche dating bracket right now like you know what i'm talking about so hey if it works it works i hope everybody can find a people the person that they want to be with but uh dude this is a very bad way of looking at it man i'm gonna keep it a buck with you if anything if you're dating i would go i would say that you would probably want to have as many options as possible if you're looking for somebody to be with, if you're just having sex with people, it's whatever. But if you're looking for somebody to actually be with you for a prolonged period of time, dating, actual dating, and potentially even more than that, then you probably want as many options as humanly possible. And then you yourself will be the filter. You can determine who is and who is not eligible to receive your love, affection, and vagina lubrication or male genitalia or whatever. So it, it, it just kind of seems really weird that you're looking at this as like a good thing. I mean, sure. But simultaneously, it's a really weird way of looking at it. Like, why would we want to date people who don't like fat people? Okay, a moment for this highlighter. It's all right. Wow. Just looking the way that we do. I think it's really interesting. I see so many times, like, women doing their makeup and stuff like that. And I think, like, how are you more concerned with the face care, but you're not care you, you don't care about the body care? To me, that just seems really, really weird. Like, there's only so much makeup you can apply to your face. But there's a lot of work you can do to your body, man. And I know that she's probably secure in her body. Like, fine, whatever, dude. You know, love yourself. But um, can we love ourselves to the degree that we understand that we're unhealthy? Like, can we acknowledge that this might be not so good for ourselves? Like, I don't know why so many people think that being fat is beautiful. It's not beautiful. It's diabetic. It's death. It's not good. It's not delectable either. A lot of people just don't want to be with somebody that's fat. So... It's fine that you think you're you're beautiful, but you're not, and that's okay. Um, but you're you yourself are telling me that you know that this is an unattractive trait, so. Literally weeds out so many assholes. Even if I lost all of the weight, I would still not want to be with someone who's going to be rude or disrespectful towards anyone just based off the way they look. I think that. <laughs> I don't think she believes that. I, I I would very much I would very much like to actually have a conversation with this person because usually when people say stuff like that, I think that they are picking and choosing. Because depending on the person, dude, I think, and depending on the compliment, depending on like treating people different based off of how they look is basically how everybody acts in the world in general. People get music, people get parts in movies, people get parts in certain things, people get jobs, people get better, better degrees of attention because of the way that they look. So naturally, I mean, your boyfriend or this particular guy that you're talking about is literally the definition of that particular thing, which is that he is chosen to be a male performer because of the way he looks. Is that okay? Like, do you not think that's okay? Do you not, do you think that's bad? Do you think that's like something to be like that's a bad thing? Because most of the time, that's how it is. Uh, so I don't even think you believe that. I think that you're actually coping here. I think you would be okay if somebody said something negative about somebody that you thought was negative. Honestly speaking, I don't think that she believes this. And believe it or not, I've had guys do that where they're completely rude to like thinner women thinking it's going to like impress me. I just want to make it clear. I know that there are guys who just don't like bigger women. Like that's not their preference and they're nice guys. I just want to make that clear. Moral of the story is only- I don't think she could be dating me if I'm going to be honest. Obviously she's not like applying herself to my standards, but dude, I am- most definitely somebody that talks about other people consistently as well too not in a very mean-spirited way but i love oh my god one of my favorite things to do especially if i have somebody that's compatible with me uh to walk down the street and just come up with stories or things that are occurring or voices in you know just saying things to people or not to people but about people like if you see somebody on the street and they're walking with their girlfriend maybe you used to say babe why did you babe what what why did you cheat on me last night with my dad it's just what I'm sorry, Jessup. I'm sorry, but like your dad just has a bigger penis than you. Like I just, to me, it's just funny. It's just, 
more hilarious. Like when you walk down the street, you're like, damn, this guy has a fatter ass and his girlfriend. I wonder what kind of conversation you think he pegs. You know, like I have these conversations with myself or depending on who I'm with, that person. And it's hilarious. It's my one of my favorite things to do. And I know there are people that think that, David, you're a bad person for that. Maybe I am. But hey, dude, that's what I like to do. And I couldn't be with somebody that didn't like that stuff, personally speaking. I don't know, man. I mean, I'm just a really, personally speaking, I don't think I'm weird for that. I just think that it's, it's fun. It's fun for me. They're nice guys. I just want to make that clear. Moral of the story is only go where you're wanted, appreciated, and valued. Yeah, but you can most definitely make yourself more valuable, right? You know that, right? Like just because you're saying go only go where you're valued. So that means that if you're like trash, just go to the fucking junkyard, I guess. Like go to the fucking landfill, I guess. I guess, dude. Yes, you're totally fucking right. Go where you're most valuable. But the funny thing is like you can make yourself more valuable. You can increase yourself. You can increase your value through hard work, dedication, consistency, and other things, obviously. So I guess true, but simultaneously, it's not like you can't make yourself more attractive. And that price tag does not go up or down based off one person not wanting to pay the price because someone will. Somebody, mm, somebody will pay that price tag, sure. But if you're, t it's all about like the market value. So like if you're telling me that you're a hundred dollars, right? Let's just say hypothetically, you're worth a hundred dollars. You say I'm worth a hundred dollars. But anytime you try to get, anytime you try to sell yourself, people are going mm, fifty dollars. $50 and you go, nope, $100. And that is something that happens consistently and nobody is willing to pay that $100. I don't know what how else to tell you this and this. You're not $100. That's okay though. You don't have to be $100. You can be $50. $50 is pretty valuable. $20 is pretty valuable. It's all about understanding where you're at. And the funny thing is too, you can make yourself $100 if you put in the work, if you put in the effort. You can't just default be walking around thinking that you're way more valuable than what other people are willing to pay for. There might be somebody out there, a schmuck, that might want to pay $100 for you. That's fine. But is that an actual indication of your worth or is it just somebody that just got scammed? Bye. Or somebody that has no standards and is willing to pay anything for anything. When I tell you guys, this is what I get on the daily. Hey, Hannah. Yeah, that's a bad, that's a, uh, huh, dude, um, that's a bad profile picture. That is a really bad profile picture, bro. bro. Back the fuck up. Okay. First of all, dude, get an actual picture. Get somebody to take a picture of you. What am I even getting from this dude? Little Bow Wow 2.0. It's not a good, it's not a good shot. Um, bad first pick, bad first message, dude. Be a little bit more clever than that. Just come up with random stuff. It doesn't have to be anything special. My go-to is usually What's your favorite flavor? Hey, what's going on? What's your favorite flavor of deodorant? Hey, uh, when, how old were you when you found out that you can eat Pop-Tarts as an adult? You know, like that, just random stuff. It doesn't matter. It's just something that you say to somebody to break the ice. But anyway, hey, Hannah, what's up? Uh, hey, Hannah, well, hey, what's up? What are you doing? I'm just trying to come suck on them big juicy motherfuckers. Bro, you didn't even give her a chance to even reply to the what are you doing? That's just like that, huh? Very forward, bro. Um, that's cool, though. Very forward. You can immediately get this dude out of your DMs. That's great. Uh, by the way, come suck on them big juicy motherfuckers is actually hysterical. That's crazy as fuck, dude. He's talking about boobs, I hope. I think, right? All right, whatever. <laughs> I just want to be loved. To I be honest, though, this is, this is light. This is pretty light. Like, I've gotten hit up before of dudes going like, dude, tell me the degree to what your penis curbs. Please tell me. Uh, are your nuts big or like how big would you, can you show me a picture? How many, how many stacks? Like how many, can you put one stack? Is it two stacks? What, what does your penis smell like right now? Can you tell me what it smells like right now? Can you look at it and tell me if you like it? Can you do that for me real quick? Have you ever thought about glazing meat real quick with that? And I've, I've gotten these messages before from men, a lot of men. And, uh, it's, it's, this is whatever, like saying that you want to come suck on them big juicy motherfuckers is... It's atrocious, but it's also like, whatever, dude. <laughs> to be honest, dude, I've gotten hit up with way worse. It's I not just, a competition. I'm uh, a lover girl. Somebody it's not a competition, though. They love me. Don't suck on my anything. <laughs> well, it just depends. Like, uh, I think people would be more inclined to suck on whatever the fuck if you were in a relationship, right? So try to, you know, get to. If you want somebody to do that for you and you want to be in a relationship, there's nothing better, right? The fastest way to tell if a guy's a good guy or not, uh, ask one of your fat friends. Ask her how he speaks to her Shh. uh but what how do you do that exactly like so if i have a fat friend and i go hey dude oh, i'm just trying to figure out whether or not my girlfriend is a good girlfriend can you just like talk to her for like 10 minutes real quick yeah because i know that you guys like have a 
I don't know, like you just got like a sensor, right? Like a, like a, a gaydar almost of whether or not this good, this person's good or not. Like, what do you mean? What is a scenario where somebody that's fat is going to talk to somebody that's not fat, that's also your boyfriend and or girlfriend, and they're going to somehow be able to tell you of whether or not they're fat. And then by the way, like, is that, is that like it? Like if your friend comes back, like, oh yeah, girl, mm. Nope, he is not it, girl. He did not even tell me that my ass was fat, not even once. And he also said some weird stuff, like he likes jello. Get rid of him. Uh, he is not it. He is the definition of an ick. Like, what is the, what, 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 what are the indications? I would love to know that. She will have an opinion. I just saw this guy posting about how, you know, men were saying it's so hard to even talk to women anymore because they'll just assume that you're being creepy or whatever. No, that's true to a lot to 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 a certain degree. Uh, I think a lot of women have no incentive to talk to men, out, especially out in public. There's no reason to you have nothing to lose if you just say no. So why the fuck would I just say no? There's almost no benefit to it. So there's that. And then also a lot of people nowadays are very antisocial. A lot of guys specifically have absolutely no experience with women in a very general way. A lot of dudes are abstinent and not from their own like willingness to do that but because they just they want to but they just can't they have the inability to a lot of dudes are very very anti-social a lot of guys nowadays have never been outside and they spend a lot of their time inside doing whatever they're doing working whatever the fuck some guys are literally spending their entire day inside and with the only interaction they have with like you another human being is when their discord notifications light up and they get into that party chat and they talk to their friends for 45 minutes and then they go to sleep and they do it all over again so a lot of dudes have no social interactions. Of course, women too. Like, this is not something that strictly only affects men. But um, in general, dude, yeah, a lot of guys, man, it's tough. It's really fucking tough. Even me, like, having conversations with a lot of people. Some people are just not good in conversations, but some people just never have had conversations. It's not. People of all genders can talk to each other. What's happening is that straight men are getting called out for their legitimately entitled and creepy behavior to women because women are not putting up with it anymore when they feel safe enough to call men out that is I, I, what, what 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 is the entitled behavior I, like I, that's one thing I, I like well usually when i approach a woman to have a conversation or anything like that on a dating app or something like that i'm not really expecting anything at all besides maybe a conversation and that's it and if i don't get that that's fine because you don't know me and obviously because you don't know me and i don't deserve anything from you and obviously like none of that stuff is going to occur i'm totally fine if you just don't want to talk like that's okay so i don't know i think that's probably a universal thing that happens with most people too as well i could be wrong but maybe let me know down below um but i, I think talk about the entitlement what is the entitlement there is like a secret that us fat women have known for so long is what, like butter like butter grease of some kind like what secret that the type of guys who are saying you just can't even talk to women anymore those guys don't talk to women those guys only talk to women they're attracted to i think you're dumb i think that when because listen I think she might be talking about this in a very general way. So obviously, if we're talking about dating, most of the time, if you want to date somebody, you're going to talk to somebody that you're attracted to. And that's obvious. Um, I don't know what the fuck you're, why was that even a thing that you had to say? But if you're talking about in general terms, in the sense of like, most men don't talk to women, I agree, like, you know, in social situations, men don't really talk to women and interact with women in very general, but we're talking about specifically here dating, right? So I don't know why you would even bring up the fact that men don't talk to women in general and be upset that men are only talking to the women they find attractive. Do women not find, do women not talk to men that they find attractive? Like what is the, what, it, what, it, what exactly are we talking about here? What does that have to do with anything? Like what the fuck is that? Like, is it, what is the relevance of this? Guys don't talk to women. Those guys only talk to women they are attracted to. As somebody who is in a bigger body, this has happened to me in the workplace, it has happened to me in social situations, there are men who just look through you as if you don't exist. You can be nice, you can be talkative, you can try to strike up a conversation, you can be equally nice and friendly to them as any other coworker that you have. And they just act like, why are you talking to me? They, like nothing is there. Yeah, but what is the relevance of this, dude? We're talking about dating, right? So what does it matter if some guy at the office doesn't look at you as, as like a person or whatever? Like, I don't get me wrong. I like I understand what you're saying, uh, but that's how like most people like unless you're like okay, 
if you're a very attractive person, you're hyper aware of this and you'll probably know what I'm talking about. But when you're like very, very attractive, it's almost kind of like you're too visible. It kind of seems like if, if there was a, a meter on how visible you were, let's say me, I'm probably like 20% visible to most people, right? And that's fine. Like when I walk out in public, people don't really notice me. People don't really look at me. People don't really comment on me. Like it's fine for me. I've gotten used to it. I don't really care. It's just like, it's probably a benefit to for the most part. But when you are a very attractive woman, like I know very, very attractive women and they're like a, a very visible. They're like, 120% visible and everybody talks to them and everybody wants to see what's going on with them and everybody wants to hold the door and everybody wants to do like it's 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 super 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 visible compared to just regular visibility and a lot of dudes can probably profess to this but most guys are invisible to most women like factually most dudes are just not attractive to most women and that's okay like that's fine because most women will have standards and you want a very particular thing and this guy doesn't fit that stereotype or whatever you want that's fine you don't have to find him visible or not visible but it's just kind of like the argument when people go like oh wow like i might be outside the norm here but i have ne i didn't date in high school and i always think like oh, yeah i know like how far you must be so far out of like the norm that you like do you honestly think that people are actually dating in high school like that's so fucking weird or it's like when you talk to a girl and then she goes oh like i i remember i was talking to this girl one time and she she was so detached I, she was like I, I just want to date this guy. He's like, he's really cool. He's really attractive to me. I think he's like a really nice guy, but how do I get him to like ask me out? How do I get him to know that I like him? And I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, just tell him you like him and tell him that you want to go on a date or something or whatever. And she was like, I, I could do that. But like, it's just like, if I do that and he says no, like, can you imagine how that would feel? Like, can you imagine being denied? And I'm just thinking like, yeah, what the fuck? Like, yes, of course. Like, have you not like it's it's sometimes I, I hear people say stuff and I think you're really detached from reality or like you're you have an inability to see it from the other side because that's like the norm you know like that's like the normal thing for men so like when you say like I'm not visible as a woman okay it's like that for men like default so unless you're like very attractive so yeah um I'm not surprised and I don't know what this has to do with the relevance of dating I don't know why is that even appropriate to talk about here and I still don't understand what a fat friend has to do with understanding whether or not a guy is a good guy or not a guy like what does that have to do with anything I don't know and then an attractive woman who is a co-worker or a friend or whatever will talk to them say the exact same thing or even give them less energy and uh they are all for it they are in on this conversation yeah because people are more likely to talk to somebody that's attractive compared to not attractive. What is the, is this like, nor is this like, is this like new? Like, have, okay, hear me out. Have you ever seen somebody drive down a street in a Prius, like a 2015 Prius and somebody go, oh shit, oh, let me take a picture. You never see that. But you know what you do see? When somebody drives down the, somebody drives down the street in a Lamborghini or a very exotic car, what do they do? They stop and they take a picture of it. Even though the car's not doing anything to them or there's like no incentive factor or whatever. Yes, because more attractive things get more attention. And I have to tell you this, dude, if you're more attractive, you're probably getting more attention and you're probably more valuable to most people in the senses of dating and sense of talking because like a lot of people just want to be around people that are attractive. I know it sucks to say that, but it is what it is. And I don't know why you're surprised by this. Have you not lived in the same world as me? You look older than me. So it seems like you would have more life experience. I don't know why you think this is like an oddity. That's normal. That's really normal. Matter of fact, I've, I've known guys that have been denied by women straight out, like in the worst way possible, like women that get dms on snapchat or instagram and they're very attractive women and these guys go oh, you're just so pretty you're so beautiful you're so amazing let me get your nails done let me do this and this and these women will go you're ugly you're disgusting stop talking to me and these guys will go yes queen of course i love i will do anything for you and you're just thinking what the fuck like this guy has no backbone but the point i'm making is it's, the point I'm making is like, yes, if you're attractive, you're going to get attention and that might be unwanted attention and it might be attention that you do want. But the point I'm making is it's going to be easier. hundred percent. I don't know why you think this is like weird. It's not weird. This is normal. There are just men out there who don't like, I can't. It's not just men. It's women too. Like women want to talk to more attractive women and they're nicer to women that are more attractive. They're nicer to men that are more attractive. Like people want things that are just rare. I don't know what to tell you. There's a reason why people like fucking Yu-Gi-Oh cards that were made 50 years ago or whatever the fuck that are willing to pay $20,000 for a card that was made once. It's because it's rare. It's because it's an oddity. It's because it's not normal. That's the reason. You understand that? Like, okay, whatever.
can't I can't explain it. Like if you if you've been in the situation, you know. Everybody has been in the situation. It's like this woman is so fucking out of touch, dude. She's so fucking out of touch, dude. It's it's crazy. Everybody has experienced this to one degree or another. I don't know what the purpose of like, I don't know if anybody else has experienced this, but I've been hungry and I don't know, like, have you guys ever like been hungry before? Yes, everyone, every single person, dude, especially dudes, especially if we're talking about this. Yes, uh-huh. Fat women out there, you know this. There are just certain men who, they look at you like, I don't understand why you're alive. You I, I real I'm sorry to say this shit, dude, but this is one of the most basic bitch takes I've ever heard in my fucking life. It's not profound in any way. Everybody has experiences to one degree or another, especially men. There are a lot of dudes out there that are decent looking dudes that are just not visible, like that are just completely never going to be acknowledged by women and other people. And that's just the way it is. And this happens on every front of every, every, everything. Like think about anything in your life. That really, that really basic bitch cup. There's a reason why they sell a black cup for $10, but they sell that neon pink one for 15 because that neon pink one is slightly valuable because it's rare. It's not normal. It's unconventional. There's a reason why things are more expensive when they have exotic traits or things that are weirder. And that's okay because that's just how we are as human beings, okay? You don't serve any purpose to my needs, so I don't know what to do with you. This is a true thing. Leave your stories in the comments because I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who can relate to this. But yeah, if you know men who are saying, well, it's so hard to talk to women and uh, it, they're just always expecting the worst, blah, blah, blah. Two things. That guy is either, I mean, he's problematic. He has some things he needs to fix, most likely. Um, and number two, he only talks to women that he would be interested in sleeping with. I just think that she's projecting here and I know she is because obviously she has standards too. So naturally, if you have standards, you're going to be discriminating against the people that you don't like. And if you're opposed to men not doing that as a sense of like, oh, I, I'm a man, therefore I want to date somebody that I find attractive and you think that's wrong and you also do that. I just, I'm failing to see the relevance. I'm failing to see why you even made this video. This doesn't even make sense at all. Like, I don't even know why you would even bring up at the very beginning of this talking about like, oh, your fat friends will know the difference between a good guy and a bad guy because he doesn't want to talk to them and he doesn't find them attractive. It turns out that when somebody doesn't find somebody attractive, they don't find them attractive and they don't want to date them. I don't know what the fuck I tell you, bro. That's like crazy as fuck that you would even say that. Like, what does this have to do with anything? It's completely irrelevant. Okay, whatever. And this woman has, like, it's crazy because obviously... I think she's like 40, uh, but she has, it almost kind of seems like she has no life experience when it comes to dating. And that's really fucking sad. Some people will literally go the extent of their life and the, the experiences that you should have been, the experiences that you should have been gaining while you were in your twenties dating. A lot of people just don't get those. And that's really sad because that's like the number one years of your life where you should be gaining that experience. But a lot of people wait, or they just are very unattractive. And it's really sad because a lot of that time when you think that you're unattractive, you're not actually unattractive. There are just some things that you probably are not doing correctly that you can be emphasizing that would make you more attractive. And you're just like completely muting that time. So like, for instance, this woman being however fat she is and complaining that she's fat, she's been fat for a long time. Nothing has changed. And for some reason she's going, I don't like, she has no dating experience whatsoever. It's so much no dating experience matter of fact that she doesn't realize that what she's saying is obvious and like normal and everybody has these experiences, but yet she doesn't know that she hasn't dated because she has no experiences, because nobody find her attractive, because she was fat. And that's something she could have changed. Or maybe it was dressing better, or maybe it was doing your makeup better, or maybe it was finding that job that made more money, or maybe it was becoming better in social situations. There's plenty of things, or brushing your fucking teeth even. There are plenty of things that you can do to make yourself more attractive, and it's not like a weird or like oddity thing that people are not talking to you because they don't find you attractive. There's a fucking reason for that. I don't know what to fucking tell you. Like, are you thinking that dudes on dating apps are just talking to like 99 or 100% of every single fucking woman they're, they're talking to? No, fuck no, that's not how it works. And I know you don't do that either. So. I don't even know why the fuck you're making this video and make it seem like guys are the worst people on the fucking earth when they don't talk to women they're not attracted to when you are also doing that same thing. Okay, whatever, dude. It doesn't matter. Um, I broke my chair. I don't know what happened. It just broke. It's ripped here. Can you guys see that? I tried to tape it, but it's, ba it's bad. It's broken. And it sucks because I can't find a replacement part for this, so I don't know what I'm going to have to do. Maybe I'm just going to have to tolerate it. I'm going to have to buy a new chair or something like that. It's really uncomfortable, actually, because the backrest is like on my spine and it hurts. So 
I'm tolerating pain for you, but maybe the pain makes me better. Maybe the pain makes me feel more. You know what I'm talking about? Like maybe the pain leads to satisfaction, if you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, um, I appreciate you being here today. Uh, thank you for watching today's video. I appreciate everybody leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all that stuff. I'd appreciate it tremendously. If you watched the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in BDSM because that's kind of like what I'm going through right now, but not in a very non-sexual way, in a more of like a, um, pain creates progress almost kind of. Yeah. But anyway, it's not that bad. I love you, by the way. I care about you. I think you're great. I think you're amazing. I appreciate you being here with me, taking your time out of your day to watch this video. I don't know what you're doing. Maybe you're doing dishes. Maybe you're doing your hair. Maybe you're cleaning the toilet. Maybe you're washing the floor. Maybe you're taking a shower, you naughty person, you. Maybe you're doing a whole bunch of stuff. But regardless, you're a specimen. Yeah, I want you to know that. I have to acknowledge that, that you're a specimen. And I mean a specimen in the realest way. You're capable of a lot. You do a lot throughout the day. You do a lot for a lot of people. And that is something to be acknowledged. It's not just something as simple as like, well, I don't want to do this and I'm going to do it. You should be commended for that. You should definitely get an award because it is hard to do stuff. And I agree. You do a lot. You do so much for so many people. And a lot of people don't acknowledge that. I'm here to acknowledge it. You do a lot and I want to give you... Good job. Fantastic. Pat on the back. You're doing a great job for yourself and you're doing a great job for everybody else around you. Good job. I care about you. I think you're beautiful. I think you're amazing. Keep being so amazing. I love your eyebrows. I want to lick them. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all that stuff will be linked down below. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.